this is a video lecture series of Embedded System subject. We are going to discuss about CAN bus in this video. Okay, so we are uh, doing a couple of videos about Embedded System subject. These videos will be useful for you if you are preparing for your semester examination or for interview preparations. Embedded System is actually uh, having a lot of importance nowadays. Mostly all companies are asking for uh, knowledge in Embedded Systems. Okay. So these videos will be useful if you are preparing for interviews or your semester examinations. So if you are seeing EC Electronics channel for the first time, please do subscribe to the channel and also follow us on our Instagram page and for notes, please do subscribe to our Telegram channel. Okay. So let us see about CAN BES in this video. So CAN means controller area network. That is a full form of CAN. So this CAN, whenever you are thinking about CAN, it is actually a BES uh, for connecting of high speed peripherals or input output devices or you can say it is peripherals uh, mostly in automobiles okay so can mostly we use in automobiles so can is controller area network is a robust vehicle best standard designed to allow microcontrollers and devices to communicate with each other without the help of a host computer without uh, the intervention of a host computer if uh, various devices want to communicate with each other then we can use a can mostly we use this in vehicles or automobiles okay for each device the data frame is transmitted sequentially but in such a way that if more than one device is transmitting at the same time high priority device will be uh, communicating and others will have to back off okay let us see the connection of a can bus so this is a can bus you can see that Loads of peripherals are connected to it. Power supply is there, display unit, display unit again, then FDR, then EMS sensor, AHRS. So these are actually components of automobiles. Okay. So in order to interconnect these components or these peripherals or these units, we in order to communicate between these units, we can use a CAN bus. Now, if you see the CAN bus, Every element or every device connected to a CAN bus will act as a CAN node and the CAN node will have a host and there is a CAN controller and a CAN transceiver. So like this, there will be various CAN nodes present. So this is one CAN node, this is another, this is another one. Likewise, it is connected through the CAN bus. There is a high and low line and there is a termination to both the ends in the CAN bus. Okay. So this is a simple architecture of a CAN bus. Now if you see inside a CAN controller, this is how a CAN controller, its inner uh, structure is present. Okay, Inside the CAN controller, you can see that there are various elements. There is a CAN protocol machine, which is holding the protocol of the CAN. Then acceptance, filters, receive buffer, primary transmit buffer, then secondary transmit buffer, host controller interface. So these all are elements present in the CAN controller. Okay, Then... So the transmit buffer, receive buffer, everything is actually present inside the controller. Then there is a transceiver, uh, which is used to send and receive the data uh, to the to the bus and from the bus. And it is given to the CAN controller. Then from the CAN controller, the data is given to the host. Okay. See here, there is a host controller interface, right? So towards this end, the host will be connected. And the data transmission is happening in this part. See. From the protocol machine, the data is received and it is given to the receive buffer and it is given to the host like this. Okay, so anyway, this is how the CAN controller structure is present. Okay, next, most important part of CAN, prot, CAN BES or the CAN BES uh, architecture is actually its frame format. So whenever you are writing the CAN uh, in your semester examinations, what all things you should do is you should write a introduction about CAN that uh, it is a bus which is used in automobiles mainly to connect high speed peripherals and uh, you should draw a small diagram and, and also you can draw this diagram. Okay, so uh, this diagram is actually uh, you need to draw only if they are asking to draw uh, the detail of CAN controller. Okay. But you cannot skip the frame format. You have to write about it. Okay. So this is the frame structure of a CAN bus. This is how the data packets are looking like. This is, like, no, this is how the frames or the data frames are looking like. Okay. So what all things are present? See here. This is a start bit. Then there is a identifier field. Then 
there is a control field, then there is data, then there is acknowledgement, then end frame. So let, let us see the details. While discussing the details, we'll see the, the respective field. Okay. So the data frame starts after detecting the dominant state is not present in the canvas. So when the, whenever there is a transition from logic 1 to 0, it is considered as a start bit or the frame start bit. Okay, see, there is a high to low transition. You can see an arrow here, right? So it is actually indicating a high to low transition. The high we are considering here as a recessive state. That is logic 1 we are taking as recessive state. Logic 0 we are taking as dominant state. So there is a recessive to dominant transition or logic 1 to 0 transmission is taking place and that we are taking as a start bit. Okay. Next, after the start bit, there are 6 fields. I am not saying a 6 bits, but 6 fields are present in the CAN frame format. Okay. So, let us see the first field. The first field is 12 bit arbitration field. Let us go back to the diagram. See here, this is the 12 bit arbitration field. Now, the 12 bit is splitted as 11 plus 1. 11 bits. 11 bits are message identifier bits and plus 1 RTR bit. Okay. Let us see the details. So, the 12 bit arbitration field can be divided as 11 plus 1. So, 11 bit is destination address. That is the identifier. Identifier means destination address. Then 1 RTR. RTR is remote transmission request. Now, the destination device address specified in 11 bit subfield and whether the data byte being sent is a data or for the device or a request for the device is the 1 bit subfield. So, this RTR remote transmission request is actually a field or it is the bit which is indicating whether the data or whether the content in that data frame is a data for the receiver or it is a request for the receiver. Okay. So, if you look into this RTR field, you will understand that whether it is a data or if, whether it is a whether it is a request. If the bit is having 0 means, it means this packet is a request for data from the device. Consider that uh, one device wants a data from another device. So, in that RTR field, there will be a 0. But consider that a, if a device or a peripheral is sending a data to another peripheral. Means it is a data, right? The data frame is having a data. So, in that case, the RTR field will be having a value 1. Okay. I hope it is clear. If a device is requesting some data from another device, then the RTR field will be having 0. Otherwise, it will be having 1. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, this 11 plus 1, that is 11 bit destination address plus 1 bit RTR is called the arbitration field. I hope this much is clear. Okay. Next. Second field is 6 bit control field. The first bit is identifier extension and the second bit is always 1 and the last 4 bit specifies the data length. So, after the arbitration field, next comes the field called control field. Let's see here. So, this field this is called the control field, right? It is having how many number of bits? 6 bit. Out of the 6 bit, the first bit is actually an extension of the identifier or the previous field. Okay. And the next bit is always 1. Okay. The second bit is always 1. And the last 4 bits, out of the 6 bits, the last 4 bits is indicating the length of the data packet. Okay. The data length. Okay, I hope this much is clear. So, that is the second field which is the control field. Okay, so after the start bit, there is the first field called arbitration field. After the arbitration field, then comes the control field. Then after the control field, then comes the data field. It can be 0 to 8 bytes. Okay, let's see that. The third field is the third field of 0 to 64 bits. Its length 
depends on the data length code in the control field okay so the third field is actually a data data field then the fourth field is 16 bit cyclic redundancy check bits the receiver node use it to detect errors if any during the transmission okay now we are sorry now we are uh, talking about the fourth field so we have discussed about the start bit we have discussed about the, the first field which is arbitration field the next field which is control field the third field is data field data field means whatever data the sender want to include it will include then after the data field then comes the cyclic redundancy check or crc field it is having 15 bits or 0 to 16 actually uh, 16 bits is present and that is actually the cyclic redundancy check which is used for detecting of errors the receiver will use the crc field for detecting of errors okay so that is the fourth field which is crc field then the fifth field is of two bits the first bit is acknowledgement now acknowledgement is equal to one and receiver sent back zero in this slot when the receiver detect an error okay so acknowledgement is equal to one and receiver will send back a zero when the receiver detects an error in the reception the sender after sensing a zero in the acknowledgement slot generally generally retransmit the data frame okay so the fifth field is two bits the first bit is acknowledgement okay acknowledgement consists of there is the fifth field consists of two bits okay the first bit is used for sending off the acknowledgement and if there is some error in the data packet the receiver will send us zero in that acknowledgement that is the first bit of the acknowledgement okay and when the uh, the receiver is receiving a zero means it will detect that there have some errors occurred in the data packet and it will retransmit the frame once again okay then the second bit is acknowledgement delimiter and it signals the end of the acknowledgement field okay so let us see that once again here see this field is the acknowledgement field okay the acknowledgement field is consisting of two bits the first bit is actually used for indicating whether the data sent was correct or it is having some errors or not so the first fee first bit in the acknowledgement field normally it will be one but if there is some errors uh, happening in the data frame, then the receiver will put a zero in that field that is in the first field of the acknowledgement, first bit of the acknowledgement field and send back to the sender. Okay. The zero is indicating that this data frame is corrupted and please send it once again or retransmit the frame. Okay. So that is the indication of the first bit in the acknowledgement field. The second bit in the acknowledgement field is a acknowledgement delimiter. Delimiter means it is the end or the, uh, it is indicating that the acknowledgement field uh, has ended. Okay. So that is the field called acknowledgement field. Acknowledgement field is having two bits. First, fit, first bit is used for indicating whether the data frame is received without errors or with errors. Without error means it will be one. With error means it will be zero. Then second bit of the acknowledgement field is acknowledgement delimiter or the end of acknowledgement field. Okay, very simple. I hope this much is clear. Next one. Next, the sixth field is seven bits. That is the end of frame. Okay, fifth bit is acknowledgement field and the sixth bit is seven bit that is indicating the end of frames and it will be seven zeros. Okay, seven zeros will be put in the sixth field. Okay, see here. This is end of frame field. It will be having seven bits. And after the end of frame, there will be again three bits. And this three bits is the intermission field. Okay. The three bits is actually indicating that it is a gap between the two successive or two adjacent data frames. Okay. Just like we put uh, guard bands in uh, TDMA or FDMA. Here also in between the data frames, you put a three bit field to indicate a separation okay 
So that's all about the data frame of CAN. So the sixth field is consisting of seven bits, which are seven zeros. And after the sixth uh, field, then again comes a three bits, which is actually a gap between the two data frames. Okay, two frames. Uh, in order to distinguish between two frames, there will be a gap of three bits. Okay, so that uh, that uh, last uh, portion is called intermission field. Okay, so uh, this is all about the frame format of CAN. So in this video, we have discussed about uh, the CAN bus. What is the use of CAN bus? How is the structure of uh, connection of CAN bus? And also we have seen uh, how the CAN controller structure is what all things are present in the CAN controller. And also mainly we have focused on the CAN frame format. So uh, if you're preparing for any uh, semester examinations or interview preparations, I'm really hoping that this video is very useful, uh, especially the embedded system videos. So if you are uh, seeing the channel for the first time, please do subscribe to our channel. Uh, mostly a lot of people is actually watching the channel without subscribing to it. Please do subscribe to it. And uh, please do like the video if you are finding it useful and also share the videos with your friends. That's it. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.